Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some of the new resolutions and I guess some of the new discoveries in regards to this unusual phenomenon detected not so long ago that seems to be coming directly from the center of our own galaxy. The phenomenon that the scientists thought they understood pretty well, but turns out that maybe we were a little bit too quick to come to conclusions. And specifically, it's actually in regards to these unusual formations that seem to be emanating right from the center of our galaxy. And in this case, we're talking about these formations. These are known as Erosita bubbles. And so let's talk about this new study that was just published that seems to provide direct evidence that we might have been wrong about the initial assumptions for how this was actually formed. And more importantly, discovers some additional features nobody has ever seen before. But I guess here, let's start with something a little bit more obvious. In the last few years, by looking around different galaxies, the scientists discovered a lot of different really powerful formations visible around different galaxies. Here's actually one of the nearest ones to us, coming from Centaurus A. And naturally, this is something that we observe everywhere and to some extent even understand pretty well. Because in most cases, this is a result of a very powerful central black hole producing very powerful accretion disks and also very powerful jets. With most of this driven by entanglement of magnetic lines that happens around black holes. With these regions also sometimes referred to as AGN, active galactic nuclei. And naturally, the scientists wanted to discover something somewhat similar about the Milky Way. We basically wanted to find out if the Milky Way and the black hole Sagittarius A star in the center produced something very similar as well. And somewhat coincidentally, and actually independent of all of this research, back in 2010, approximately 13 years ago, the iconic Fermi telescope observed these unusual gamma ray emissions coming from the region around the galaxy. With these unusual formations, most likely forming a really large structure, but most importantly, appearing as if they actually came from the center of the galaxy itself, with whatever made them most likely happening approximately two and a half million years ago. Some scientists have even suggested that this is something that might have lasted for a hundred thousand years. Here's roughly what the structure kind of looks like, and as you can see, these bubbles are really big, over 25,000 light years in length, suggesting that if they were pointing toward planet Earth, we would right now be inside one of these bubbles. But this was only visible in the gamma rays. Additional observations in, for example, microwaves detected certain regions that were in somewhat similar formations, but generally there was just a lot of stuff going on here, so it was kind of difficult to connect these events. But in 2020, or essentially three years ago, this telescope behind me, referred to as Erosita, discovered something very similar. By looking in the X-rays, it discovered two more bubbles that were somewhat similar in shape and to some extent somewhat similar in the appearance, but much bigger and much more energetic. And when observed together, they sort of look like this. The bubbles in red are Fermi, the bubbles in blue are Erosita. So that's X-rays and gamma rays. And as you can see, because of their intersection, a lot of scientists almost instantly assume that it's probably from the same event. As a matter of fact, there are quite a few videos on the channel that go through various papers that try to establish the connection. And the initial connection here was pretty strong. We essentially have something that appears very similar to this, potentially representing one major eruption that produced different frequencies, and potentially coming from Sagittarius A star, the black hole in the middle. Naturally suggesting that maybe this is exactly what our black hole did two and a half million years ago, or I guess more like 2.6 million years ago. And so that's what the scientists initially proposed. But to other scientists, this was a little bit too convenient, as if things just connected too well. And moreover, there was just no evidence yet that the actual production of X-rays and gamma rays came from the black hole event or some kind of a major emission from the center. And so the scientists behind this recent study decided to investigate this further and essentially looked at thermal and chemical properties by using the data from another telescope, known as Suzaku, that collected quite a lot of data for approximately 10 years. And in this case, they wanted to answer two questions. First of all, what sort of stuff is in there? What kind of chemicals? But second of all, can we confirm that the temperature predicted by various studies is going to be exactly the same as observed by this telescope? And it turns out that most of the answers to these questions were kind of surprising. First of all, even though initial studies predicted that the temperature inside the bubble and outside the bubble is going to be very different, that did not turn out to be the case. The observations revealed something else. The temperature was actually the same, which to some extent already created a bit of a problem for the explanation involving a central emission from the black hole. If these bubbles were not hotter than the outside space, it did not really make a lot of sense. 
but then the scientists were able to collect additional data right from the edges of this particular bubble, in the process discovering that the x-rays here were produced by a very thick gas and not by temperature difference, with the gas in this case containing things like neon oxygen and magnesium oxygen ratios that were extremely similar to what we normally observe from various events involving star formation. So basically, very powerful supernova that usually produce very specific emissions. And so these observations suggested that these galactic bubbles, first of all, might have been actually created by two very separate events, and second of all, erosita bubbles were not the result of black hole activity from the center as assumed by previous studies. These powerful events involving black holes would not produce the same observations and would not produce the same chemical emissions. Nothing like this is detected in these jets, and the X-rays here do produce temperature difference. And so in this case, the Fermi bubbles might have been produced by a central black hole emission that might have started two and a half million years ago. But despite similarities in shape and even the location of origin, Erosita bubbles most likely have a completely different origin and most likely did not come from the black hole, implying that this is just a correlation or basically a lucky coincidence, not actually a result of the same event. And so in this sense, the scientists are not entirely certain what produced Erosita bubbles, but they do have some guesses with one major guess being a major star forming period that most likely happened somewhere in the central bulge. So basically, for some reason, suddenly we had all of these stars forming, producing huge amounts of energy and going supernova, with all of this lasting for a pretty long time, possibly even a few million years. We have observed a lot of similar events in other galaxies. And once all of this was finished, all of the remnant gas started to propel away from the center and formed the bubbles that we see. But I guess the next question is once again in regards to what possibly caused this. Now in some sense, this event, and also the Fermi bubbles event, has a slight chance to maybe have a somewhat similar origin. For example, it could have been from a large amount of gas that approached the central region inside the Milky Way galaxy, which basically led to the formation of a lot of stars in the middle, but also caused major emissions from the black hole, as some of this gas, or maybe some of the remnants, then fell into the black hole as well. Or maybe some of these stars ended up falling closer and closer to the center, and one of them fell into the black hole or came really close to it, with several other stars following as well. Which might have produced a relatively long period of huge amounts of activity from the central black hole. But all of these are of course just gases. At the moment, even in other frequencies, such as the microwaves, it's really kind of difficult to determine what's happening. And so at least for now, these events seem to be more or less separate. And which also means that we're back to not knowing what actually caused this or what happens in the center of our galaxy once in a while. With the other question that's kind of difficult to answer being how frequent are these events? For all we know, these events happen every few million years and maybe this is just one of many, many such bubbles coming from the center of the galaxy. But we're not going to know any of this until future observations with possibly different telescopes, including the iconic James Webb. There might be some other science in other frequencies that could help us solve some of these mysteries. And until then, check out some of the previous videos on a similar topic in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.